No fewer than 6.7 million Nigerians are yet to collect their permanent voter cards in less than eight weeks to the general elections. Data obtained by the officers uh, in the state of the Independence National Electoral Commission, INEC, revealed that 6.7 million PVCs were locked up in INEC's safe uh, across 17 states in the federal capital territory. And uh, INEC National Commissioner for Information and Voter Education, Festus Okoye, disclosed this in a statement that with effect from January 6 to 15th of 2023, the collection of PBCs will be devolved to the ward level, which and after which um, they would be moved to local government areas. Now, ahead of the 2023 general election, the Independent National Electoral Commission has charged voter education providers to be adequately equipped in order to effectively sensitize and enlighten citizens at the grassroots. According to the INEC, um, the sensitization is based on technological innovations to be used, as well as the processes and procedures for the election. Joining us to discuss um, this is Emeka Mba. He is the convener vote023.org and he's also a tech entrepreneur. Thank you so much for joining us. You see, I like the fact that INEC is talking about tech, the use of technologies because, right. you know, before now we would be talking about writing results, but we've gone past that. And thank goodness, 2023 has come with some new innovation. But let's go straight to it. What is vote023? Yeah. All right. So thank you for having me once again. So uh, vote023 is uh, a digital platform that we put together chiefly to change people's behavior towards elections. So we crafted not very non-partisan messages and in various languages from English, Pidgin, uh, Yoruba, Igbo, Aosa, and we're telling people, look, the power to change the country is in your hands simply by getting your PVC and going out to vote. And we're telling you reasons, if you visit our campaign site, uh, vote023.org, why you should go out to vote. So if you, if you really care about healthcare, if you really care about education, you should go out there and, and vote. And we also have a public service line that when you call that line and you listen to our message to the end, there's an incentive for uh, you. Before we get to the incentive. <laughs> so vote 023 means you need to vote come 2023 and Correct. you have 23 reasons yes. why people should vote. Yeah. Let's talk about the 23 reasons in an order, a particular order for those who are watching because this segment is to educate the voters. So let's yeah. start with the number one reason. Uh, number one reason, value for life. Uh, if you go to our website, the very first thing is value for life. I may not be able to remember all of them mm -hmm. in that order, mm -hmm. chronological order, but number one, I remember number one is value for life. We want people to say, you know what, uh, a number of people say, uh, you know what, I think that people should, um, you should go and vote one because you care about um, generally human life, right? And if justice, which is another reason again, mm. uh, is important to you, then you should go out and vote. So we have value for life, we have justice, we have security, we have health care, we have job creation, we have, I should run through the entire thing. No, 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 let's, let, I want to pick the life. one after the okay. other. So value for life, um, we were looking through 2022 and all of the major events that took place. And I remember, just as Google put it, from January of 2022 to almost December, the first thing that happened in the first month was massacres, massacres, killings. I tell you what, in the whole of 2022, we had just two positive things that happened. Toby Amoson won, broke a 16-year record, and um, I think one more thing, which I can't remember, but everything else was doom and gloom. And so, yes, of course, it brings the issue of value to life to the table. Um, so if we're picking a leader, we have to look at a leader who's able to prioritize that. Because again, um, the average Nigerian within and without would say that, what, would ask the question, what is the value placed on one Nigerian's life? Uh, I totally agree. And I mean, if you look at the culture, uh, which um, I'm, I'm a very hopeful person and I hope that this will change. You know, you were, really, were living in a culture where people get to, you know, they assess you and, you know, if this is the, they, they look at you and like, mm, this is the kind of a money that's in your account. And then you see your, your, your elder calling you Augusta just because they just feel, oh, you're right, invested this Benz, which you shouldn't be so really, you know. So for me, uh, Personally, and to other people, if you look at all the candidates, again, we don't really talk about candidates, but we talk about reasons. But when you listen to all the candidates, I'm sure you can sort of 
one of them will resonate to you and it's okay based on this person's speech or this person's manifesto this is where this is how they value human beings or this is where they value um, um, the life of Nigerian cities you know, and that should influence you to at least go out to vote so whoever you think sort of you know does it for you you know should influence you should go out and vote so based on that reason you, you made mention of the fact that these messages are non-partisan yes very non uh, in other words you're not campaigning for anyone it's no. not sponsored by any political party all. have you been approached by any political party to want to participate or help you in your voter education uh, well i mean inter interestingly when when we we uh, kicked off in um we we had people say uh you know what okay we don't want you to be very obvious about uh, the political party behind you but you can sort of share some some data with us and we're like no you get uh, that that can happen because one of the things we said publicly is after this campaign is over if you want to come and audit what we've done you can come and um, audit that so absolutely no and it's not even in the best interest of any political party because our messages are very non-partisan and at this period every political um, person of interest should be promoting themselves and we're not about promoting anybody so the messages being non-partisan doesn't even help you mm -hmm. at all so uh, i don't see anybody really pushing that uh, agenda so um, the, the, the initiative has been mostly self-funded by myself, a group of friends, and then recently the uh, United States um, U.S. Embassy in Nigeria just okay, uh, gave us a grant. Um, you're a tech entrepreneur, yes, and a lot of people will say techies are always building software. Uh, why did you decide to go into this? Uh, um, you, did you did you have an idea or was it that you felt a need because of what you see on the ground yeah okay so first of all uh at emerging labs we're always building very innovative products from let's say uber for ambulances to a fintech product for a client or a whistleblowing platform for um, an agency so it really depends we're always doing exciting things and um, a couple of months almost a year back we we had this solution that had this hybrid of IVR calls and SMS and airtime and we had intention to use it for um, a different thing and in interestingly towards the election a number of people came towards and said okay you, should, you could use this for election you know but uh, as a person of faith uh, at a point in time I just got this inspiration so you know what take this um, technology public and make it non-partisan where we weren't interested in you know um, being very partisan as regards this particular project. Uh -huh. I mean, there are other projects we could get involved in, but for this particular project, very non-partisan. So, uh, it, so it came from a place of inspiration and also, okay, you know what? True confession, this is the first time that I'm actually going to vote. <laughs> you know, so yeah. Uh, so, um, I think for me, I came from a place of, you've been complaining for years and you haven't done anything about it. So really, you don't have any right to complain. So this time around, if you're not going to complain, what are you going to do? What are you going to contribute? So the, for the very first time I decided to vote, I decided to also encourage millions of Nigerians to go out and, and vote. So that's how all this I'm came I'm most about. curious as to why you have never voted, and I'm not sure you're just turning 18. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious. Why has it taken you so long to vote? I mean, sincerely, yeah. what made you, what put you off voting? Well, I would say that, um, hmm. thinking about it, I'll say a couple of things. One is, I guess, the, the voter apathy bug beats me. Maybe coming from maybe my, my background, and I just grew up in a family where I, I didn't really see my parents' votes to start with mm. one so i think somehow that sort of just <laughs> indoctrinated me yeah I mean, and so that's sort of sorry mommy and daddy <laughs> so um so i think somehow that sort of maybe indoctrinated me like okay this this thing is not just really important so that's one that's what i would say um secondly i would say that also growing up there was also the fear of violence you know um we see in the news where there's some troublesome hot spots and then you also have one one of your parents telling you i don't want to lose my son i don't want to lose you get so that i think val um growing up and not seeing you know people in my uh, household vote i think that sort of rubbed up on me and then secondly would be fear of violence right but again 
that ends. That's why we're doing this That's why you're doing this. So 23 reasons why people should vote. How do they get access to this information? Because the last time I spoke to you, you talked about, you know, um, putting a call through to people in yeah. different languages. Yeah. And then if they listen to the call to the end, um, that call carries a messaging which encourages them to go vote, right? right. Um, tell us how it works and, and what is at the end of the call. Okay. All right. Thank you. So there are two ways you can engage with the platform. So users can either go to um, vote023.org. And when you go there, you vest, the very first thing you see is our mission and objective. And then you can dive straight to you see a place where you can click on listen. You can actually listen to the message online and, and you can choose any message at all. Then the second one is um, you can call our public service line. Uh, I believe it's 0160. 01700 6212. 01700 6212. So if you call that number and you will hear a jingle and ask you for your language and you, you select your language, and then when you select your language, you listen to it to the very end, and there's a very nice jingle playing telling you the power is in your hands, and you know, you have the responsibility to select the right leader and you know basically how powerful your vote is so therefore go out and vote mm -hmm. so if you it's just uh, i think it's about a 45 50 something seconds message less than a minute so if you listen to it to the very end you get to uh we get to incentivize you with 100 naira airtime and now that 100 naira airtime is more like you know to just get you excited to also mm -hmm. tell your friends that hey I, I called this number and they give us um uh, airtime so so that's what we did and, and and we noticed that every time you know we load the system with airtime there's this spike you know we get to see lots of people call in and uh, we started in lagos we don't have any representative in Enor, but we see the numbers in Enor also um, up. spiking up and you know pidgin language and Igbo and yoruba all, all spiking lovely up. Yeah. so this incentive would really mostly work for people in those urban areas and i'm guessing that that's your target because again the average person that comes out to vote is not you and i Yes, we do, a couple of us, but then there has been that margin yeah. um, for people like you and me who don't necessarily show up to the polling units. But then the guys at the grassroots, the lowest of the low, they mm -hmm. are the ones who really show up for the election. So I'm thinking, when you were developing this app, did you have them uh, at the back of your mind with the, you know, the, the different languages? Again, you put Hausa, Igbo, and Yoruba, but then Nigeria has several other languages. Oh, yeah. So how do these, uh, does the pigeon suffice? Thank you very much. So uh, one, funny enough, after, after English language, um, pidgin language is actually, I said pidgin language, pidgin is actually like the highest number immediately after English. So we see that, okay, I mean, the, the guy that understands Aunsa or Yoruba chances are he also knows, uh, understands pidgin. So we actually see pidgin language is actually really, really high. Um, I mean, obviously we couldn't do so many languages. Uh, it's not as if we don't want to, but hey, that's where we need um, sponsors Some and be able to, to, to support. Now, you, you also talked about how other people can um, sponsor a voter so um, tell us how that works um, how do I sponsor more people because this is more like um, you know paying it forward yeah so what what are people supposed to do if I can afford whatever it is whether it's a hundred naira or whatever yeah. I don't know what it is how do I pay it forward so that more and more people can understand that the power is in their hands all right wonderful question so one of the things we did is we tried to make this the citizens campaign so okay. if you go to our website you can either go to our website and just go to sponsorship or you can go to vote03.org uh, for slash sponsorship. So if you go there, we did a breakdown of, okay, this is how much it costs us to, to make a call, and this is how much the airtime is. So I think an average, the, um, the cost for a call is about 130 naira because of the 100 naira airtime, and then 30 naira to cover for SMS and people flashing the line. You wouldn't get to flash the line a lot. <laughs> Just testing the to line. see if it works. Exactly, and then for everybody that calls, also send like a thank you SMS and you should forward the message and things like that. So, so we made it very simple that a call is about 130 naira and you can just go to the sponsorship section and you say, you know what, I am just going to sponsor 10 calls. That's fine, 1,300. If you can sponsor 10,000 calls, great. A million calls, by all means, please come. Um, and I think I, I, we had this chat last time where when we did the national launch, uh, there, was a, there, was a, there was a security guy very close by and I was like, he's very interested in sponsoring 30 calls. And that really touched me because we, we didn't want it to be like, okay, this is just something only for corporates. We wanted yeah. it to be that, the average person exactly for anybody that actually 
heard a call, it was sponsored by somebody else. So because you, you've enjoyed this airtime, you've enjoyed the message, you've heard the message, and you know you can stop there and say, oh, well, I'm good, or at least you can share it. But then the next thing you can do is, okay, you know what, this thing actually costs money. Let me just go and sponsor 10 calls or 20 calls. And, and people have sponsored 10 calls, 20 calls. So if you just go to the website, um, votealtotree.org, click on sponsorship, and you can pay with your debit card online. Wow, this is very innovative. Um, and what has the response been, whether it be the sponsorship, whether mm -hmm. it be the clicks, because I'm yeah. sure you see what you see is clicks yeah. and, you know, yeah. like you said, there's a spike. Yeah. Um, from when you launched mm -hmm. and now, because we're getting 50 days before the major yeah. elections, um, what's been the demographic that you've covered the most? Yeah, well, um, so because we're not a telco, we can only just sort of, judge based on the language people are listening to so uh -huh. yes yeah, so by that we can gauge that okay after english there's a lot of pigeon and then the next thing is answer so that just sort of tells us that okay this thing has traveled to the north and there are a lot of people listening to it so other than that it would be very interesting to maybe after the campaign we maybe if we get permission from a telco like okay really talk to us where did all these calls come from but mm -hmm. right now we can't tell where all the calls are coming from because that's very sensitive data we don't have access to. Before we come back to the website so the people who are watching can go to it, let's talk about young people like you and um, you know the elections that are coming up because um, I'm sure you were privy to the open letter that was written by former President Lucia Gorbasan just to young people. It was mostly directed at young people and he continuously harped upon the fact that this elections would be one way or the other in the hands of young people and they're the determinant of how it would go. Um, do you see young people, aside from the phenomenon that we see on social media, the wave, the you know, the whole drive, yeah. do we do you see a replication at the polls in terms of mm -hmm. I like is saying we still have millions of voters card that have not been uh, you know picked up. Mm -hmm. Do you see that replicating in 2023's election? Um, as opposed to what we see, we've seen over time with the voter apathy that you have made mention of. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's really hard to tell, and we can only be hopeful because I mean there is there's the talking part and then there's the doing part, right? So, um, but if I if I could go by just the survey that that I do personally, probably if I get into an Uber and I talk to um, just random people. Right. So, so, so say, for instance, the the any random Uber young person and like, driver that I speak to will tell me, OK, you know what? I'm interested in voting and I actually have my PVC. So not just so. But I because that's a very small sample set, I can't really say, you know, but I mean, this election looks very interesting and I really don't want to underestimate anybody at all it is very possible that with all the things that have happened you know recently in the past the NSAS and all the you know insecurity i think people, a lot of people are tired particularly young people but the same thing happened in the in, you know, between 2015 and 2019 and we still saw a lot of people not show up to in fact the the number of voters mm. drastically dropped yeah uh, so again uh, if what happened in, in between 2015 and 2019 was a dampener. Mm -hmm. uh, who's to say that 2022, which had more of the spikes in mm -hmm. all of the massacres and killings, would not put a dampener also? Well, only, only a prophet could tell. <laughs> only a, a prophet could tell. But I mean, uh, so I, I think we also we also have a very interesting generation because what social media was. Um, what social media was about let's say four years ago is not what social media is right now because if you look at it it was also true social media that and um, um the end SARS protest was organized so mm -hmm. in as much as we could just say oh there's a lot of talk in social media but people also get to use social media to really organize pvc drives and and communities and body systems so um it'll be interesting to just see uh, what people are there. I mean, anytime I post up something on my WhatsApp story, I get people telling me, oh, I can actually help people get um, their PVC, okay, I can mount pressure on XYZ, things like that. So if that just happened at the WhatsApp status level, you get, uh, if you escalate it to, you know, a few couple of hundreds of thousands of people, you know, we, we just never know. So yes, I could know. Be made. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, I know that there's still millions of PVC that uh, have been collected, but again, I mean, if if you listen, if you if you look at Lagos State for an example, you know what you really need is just 
one million young people coming out to vote and it doesn't look that impossible you know but let's let's see and we do have a lot of young people in oh, Lagos. Yeah. so finally the number again for people to to call um to hear these messages yeah and um, you said you said it's zero one hmm. seven zero zero correct six two one two that's zero one seven zero zero six two one two so if they call uh, they could hear the message yeah. telling them why it's important to vote and for those who want to sponsor calls, yeah. um, what's the website again? Vote023.org. Vote023.org. Correct. All right. Well, um, Tuka Mekamba is a, a tech entrepreneur, but of course, he's the brain behind Vote023.org. Thank you so much. Of course, Thank you, you are one way or the other making an impact and educating voters. Thank and that's you. it on the show tonight on Plus Politics. We'll be back tomorrow uh, talking for development. Don't forget your PBC is your passport to a new Nigeria. Go get it. I'm Mary Anakon. Have a good evening.